Hey boys and girls, are you ready for another science lesson? Well, Jeffrey decided to be a part of this lesson too, even though I said, you know, Jeffrey, I, I don't know if this is right for you. But even so, here he is all ready to learn science. But before we learn today's lesson, which is kind of scary, I'm kind of afraid to even talk about it, let's talk about last lesson's answers. Lesson nine. If you remember, lesson nine was about hail. And the first question, you need to get your notebooks. Okay, go get your notebooks. I'll wait for a second. Just for a second, though. Okay. So, the first answer is letter D, all of these above, and it asked which conditions are necessary for hail to form. Question number two asks, how does hail grow? And the answer is letter B. It gets coated with many layers of ice. The third question was hailstones are usually the size of a A piece. And the last question was a hailstones rings tell scientists letter D how the hailstone was formed. Okay, are you ready for lesson? 10 today, it's kind of scary. It's kind of like a sci-fi movie. It's called Meat Eating Plants. You scared yet, Jeffrey? Okay, they're called carnivores. So lesson 10, Meat Eating Plants. Carna, carna is a, from the Latin word and it means flesh, Jeffrey, flesh. So vegetarians, pay attention here, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. It, it may sound strange, but there are actually some meat-eating plants. Now, I know most of you probably already know about the first one that I'm going to show you. Yep, yep, it's the Venus flytrap. I was familiar with that one too. And the Venus flytrap is a pretty cool plant. It's, it works like a hinge. So it opens and closes. So it's open for a while and then a little friend comes to visit and then it closes up on them and uses those enzymes to digest or to eat that poor little fly up. Yep, that's the one I knew about too. The next one was called the pitcher plant. Now, I wasn't really familiar with that, um, but it's kind of like this vase here, right here. I looked at it and I went, wow, they, they sure look a lot alike. This is called the pitcher plant, and this is kind of like a pitcher. You can put water in it. But what happens is a little insect flies into the, the pitcher plant, and then it's so slippery that it can't get back out again. So tricky, beautiful, but tricky. The third plant is just plain old pretty. Are you hanging in there, Jeffrey? It's getting kind of scary, isn't it? Okay, the third one is called the sundew plant. And it's so pretty, and, but the fly comes over because it's drawn by the smell and the sight. I mean, it's pretty, it's looking at it, smells good. Yeah, something I'd like to taste. Yeah, sounds good. Nah, uh Once you land on the sundew plant, you're stuck. Kind of reminded me of like a, a spider web. You know, so the spider makes the web and then the, the insect goes on to the web and then gets stuck there too. Kind of the same thing. But you need to know also that these are only three of 600, 600 species that are meat eating plants. Once an insect does get trapped into these carnivorous plants, they use a fluid, as I said earlier, called enzymes. And the enzyme helps them digest or eat the, their prey. Yeah. This enzyme is similar to the fluid in your stomach that helps you digest your food as well. Depending on the size of the insect, 
it may take several days or it might take weeks for that plant to digest the food. Carnivorous plants often live in swamps where they have plenty of water and sunlight, but very poor soil. And most plants need nitrogen, an important nu nutrient found in soil. Since carnivorous plants live in, in soil that does not have very, very much nitrogen, they get it from mm -hmm, eating insects instead. So are, if they're just eating bugs, are they really carnivores? Are they carnivorous or not? Are, are they? Well, scientists seem to think, you might want to plug your ears for this, Jeffrey, that some of these meat-eating plants can eat frogs, sorry Jeffrey, and mice, but most of the plants just eat bugs. So I think, I think, you know, you'll be okay. Just stay out of the swamps, Jeffrey. Stay out of the swamps and you'll be fine. All right, are you ready to answer some questions? Get your notebooks number to four. There are four questions for this one today. You know what? I'm sorry. There's actually five questions. This must sound like a harder one. You ready? Number five to five. Okay. Number one. What do carnivorous plants eat? A flies, B, ants, C, mice, or D, all of these above. Number two, which of the following is an example of a carnivorous plant? A, sundew, B, fly eater, C, trapper plant, or D, all of these above. Number three, how does a pitcher plant trap insects? How does that pitcher plant trap insects? Its leaves snap shut, that's letter A. B, it pours water all over them. <laughs> okay, C, insects stick to it like glue. Or D, insects fall into it. Number four, what is an enzyme? A, a sticky fluid that looks like dew. B, a fluid that helps plants digest their prey. That's what they eat, insects prey. Who are E, by? Or D, a nutrient in the soil. And the last question, number five, According to the article, where do carnivorous plants usually live? A, in deserts, B, in mountains, C, in swamps, or D, in the rainforest? I hope you enjoyed learning science today and I hope it wasn't too scary for you. Jeffrey looks okay. Till our next lesson, see you kids.